each of these, oh God, from all ages, from all walks of life, all kinds of illnesses, surgeries, uh, surgeries to, to be performed this week. We pray, we pray for each surgeon and the team that surrounds them and so professionally assists them. We pray that infection, Lord, would be would be would be t be totally absent, and we pray for your mighty healing added to what the what the doctors do, as well as the medicine to treat. God, we thank you and we praise you that for most of us things are as well as they are. Those of us in our church family, Lord, Brother Harold, Brother Harold got a he's got a he's got a good ways to go yet, and God, we lift him up to you, and he trusts you. And he's, he's depending on you, and he's depending on us to pray for him and encourage him. We pray for this Jocelyn girl up in Winder, Georgia. Oh, God. Oh, God, somehow put this life, put this child's body, as the surgeons do all they can, as fast as they can, back together, and put her heart and soul and mind back together, we pray. We pray all this in the precious name of Jesus, and we thank you for the blessings abundant. Amen. Got a special, got a special treat for y'all this morning. Come on up here, brother. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna be. Maybe I can see it. Yeah. Slip it over this way a little bit. I didn't bring my eyes, but. Yeah. You ready? All right. Here we go. I'm sorry. Featuring Mr. Gene Griffin. No pressure, bro. No pressure. I know, right? All right. That's right. All right. Yeah. 
good to me. We may have to do this a nine at the end of the service. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know. And it just it's, it's got this. I, I try I, I try to pick a song that, that, that ties right in with the sermon as much as possible. And uh, this, this one, boy, this one does it exactly. And uh, it's, uh, I don't know if you ever heard it or not, but uh, it's, uh, it's one of them happy songs. And you know, Debbie tells me all the time I look too serious when I'm singing. Okay. And, I said, and I'm like, well, I'm trying to make sure, we, we, musician trying to make, make sure we get it just right, ain't it? Okay, it ain't that I ain't happy, Lord, I'm happy. Maybe I'll look a little happier in this one because I'm, I'm happy in my soul. And that's what, that's what really matters, ain't it, Charles? Happy in my soul. Okay, uh, let's see. That's right, Doreen said it's hard to smile and concentrate <laughs> when you're doing what we do. <clears throat> That's right. That's right. <clears throat> Never been this homesick before.
Y'all relate to that. Can y'all relate to that a little bit there? I seen Johnny rocking over there with it. I know it was good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to Romans, the eighth chapter. Oh, this is some good, good stuff we're fishing to delve in this morning. We welcome all of our online, uh, YouTube, and fa Facebook uh, brothers and sisters and those that follow us all across the land. What a blessing. What a blessing to be here this morning in Elko, Georgia with y'all. Mm. Romans 8 chapter. Verses 22 and 23. My Bible is falling apart on me. It really is. But I've, I've, heard, I've heard it said that somebody's Somebody's got a Bible falling apart. That's hopefully a good indicator that their life's not falling apart. Amen. I don't feel like mine's falling apart. There was a time when it was falling apart, but praise God, I, uh, I came to Jesus. As I hope every one of you have. If you hadn't, you're going to get an opportunity. And I hope the words of God and the testimony and so forth and the, his spirit added to it will draw you to him this morning if that has not been the case in your, your life yet. Homesick. Romans 8, verses 22 and 23. Let's read those together. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption that is the redemption of our body. All around us, y'all, creation is clearly experiencing labor pains. Tsunamis, record numbers of tornadoes, hurricane after hurricane, flooding New Orleans and South Louisiana and Mississippi down in there just over and over and over. Hurricane force winds two years ago all the way into Dublin, Georgia. I'm telling you, when it, when it come across where I live over here in North Pulaski County at about 90 miles an hour, I was surprised I had a roof on the house when I went out there the next morning, I'm telling you. Never been nothing like that in the middle of Georgia. Down in the panhandle there, 130 and 140 mile an hour winds, 75 and 80 miles inland, 115, 120 mile per hour winds in Albany, Georgia. What, now wildfires out west, not burning thousands, not even hundreds of that, burning millions of acres out there. Just burning, burning it up. No, things are not the way God originally made, made them. For how long have industries been poured waste into streams? I remember I grew up between Bonaire and Macon on the Oak Muggy River. And uh, in, the, in the late 50s and through the 60s, you could catch plenty of fish in there, but they, they had a scent about them. You could, you, could cut them. you could cut them open back then. You remember that, Charles? You cut them open. It smelled almost like gas inside of them. And uh, it was fun catching them, but you know it was a shame to have to throw them away a lot of times because they, they wasn't, fit, wasn't fitting in. You know, progress and prosperity can have a heavy price tag. You know, I don't know that there's really any global warning, but I know one thing, that polar ice cap up there at the North Pole, it's definitely getting smaller and smaller. That's, that's a fact. You know, Charles, when we was young'uns roaming them, them, them swamps and creek and river banks over in South Bibb County and North Houston County, uh, you didn't see no otter. You didn't see no armadillos. And... And uh, you didn't ever hear any cows, packs of cows barking. All, all this stuff, is the, these, these changes, these changes going on. And whereas peach farmers, biggest fear used to be that the coal was going to kill the peach crops, now, now the biggest concern is if they're going to get enough coal. Things are not like God originally made them. Some years ago, I don't know what it, it was during the Obama and, and Biden Biden years, uh, 
And I'm not saying that to cast anything negative on them. Y'all know I wouldn't do that. Uh, masses, uh, but masses of people during that, sometime back during that time, uh, they began to contract a type of flu from birds. I'm pretty sure that was the one that uh, then Vice President Biden w uh, was put in charge of, and uh, that didn't that didn't that didn't go real well. And, uh, and he wants us to trust us now to have the uh, perfect solution to this uh, coronavirus. But uh, 50, 60 years ago, penicillin would just about cure any kind of infection that might invade. Your body. Then, then come staff, and then come MRSA, and God knows what else. And you know, that that that's just ravenous in, in hospitals and nursing homes. Those infections are. And now, of course, a pandemic virus all over the world that's got a whole lot of folks just terrified. Not that long ago, a young girl up in northwest Georgia, she she went on a she had a little cut on her leg when she zip lined across the river, and she she ended up practically an invalid from that. A man working on his dock on Lake Sinclair lost his leg to that same stuff. But listen to me. These tragedies and disasters foreshadow a great and glorious future that will be born as a result of these labor pains. Ladies, you can't have a baby without labor pains, can you? You can't have a baby without labor pains. Never forget, sin brought all these pains. It brought, it brought the pain of childbirth, our Bible plainly, plainly tells us. It brought death. It brought aging. All that. Sin did that for us. Nowhere on earth can a perfect paradise be found. Oh, HGTV, they feature these couples, you know, that seem to have plenty of money, and they go down in that Caribbean, and they just they bind that paradise. Well, hold on and watch the weather channel because there's about a 150 or 60 mile per hour hurricane coming for you. It's coming. There ain't no, ain't no doubt about it. It's coming. If, if God would allow us to, 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 to create a perfect life and world here, you know what would happen also? We'd lose, we'd lose any desire to want to go to heaven to a better place. Isn't that the truth? Y'all know it is. You know it is. When things are going great, oh, you can handle it then. You, you, don't, you, don't, need, you don't need a lot of God's help when things are going good. But boy, 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 boy we, 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 call, we call on him when, we call on him when he get, get down. And ain't it great that he's always there? He's not like some people to say, oh, no, I was, I was good to you and helped you then. You, you, you turned away from me now. I ain't got nothing for you now. Praise God, he ain't never like that. Good gracious. But all of creation groans with us. We see in scripture here. And these pains of labor. And even us that have received the first fruits of the spirit. And are blessed and saved. We still groan within ourselves. We're waiting for something further. We're waiting for a glory that we haven't seen and grasped yet. That's what, that's what, that's what he's talking about in, in Corinthians. The next chapter. There, you know. Eye is not seen, ear is not heard, nor has entered the heart of any man what God has prepared for those who love him. Mm. See, we long for that third and final step of our salvation. You say, well, how is that? Now, I thought once saved, always saved. Yeah, but there's three steps, see. Past, present, and future. We were saved the moment that we agreed with God we were sinners, asked his forgiveness, and welcomed him into our life. We were saved. We're being saved since then. But that third step is we'll be forevermore eternally saved. Past, present, future. Josh Lucas, this past Tuesday, by means of a heart attack that God allowed, he moved into that third eternity. He moved into that future that I'm looking for, that you and I are looking for. Oh, Lord. You ain't got to turn now. Just listen. Just listen to the beauty of this, of this right here. Titus, second chapter, verses 11 through 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Whew, that kind of that tells us nobody's without excuse, doesn't it? Sure does. It's appeared to all men. 
Verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Oh, this right here. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee for this. Oh, good gracious. See, we press on with hope and resolve because we're persuaded he'll be able to keep that which we've committed to him against that day is to come. The first thirstiness of our part sinful souls has been quick, quenched, but we, we long with a greater desire within us. Little by little, we're coming home, see. If you're saved and walking in the Spirit, more and more the things of this life pale in contrast to what your Bible tells you, awaits you. We hunger and thirst for righteousness now. Before we ate the bread of heaven, we were hungry for this world's pig slop, wasn't we? You better believe it. Couldn't get enough of it. Couldn't get enough of it. At the end of the memorial service for Josh yesterday, they played a video of his testimony right before he was baptized. He'd been sober six years. Mm, mm, mm. Praise God. He testified in there, you know, and gave praise that his four daughters, I met the oldest one, she's 20, 25 yesterday. She looked like she's about 17. I said, boy, you got all, you got all the good genes, girl. You ain't never going to, you never going to, you won't never look 40 years old the way you're going and just beautiful, and, and God, after he had got straightened out and come to come to Jesus, and Terry Head and my cousin uh, was cousins with Josh, and Terry had been very instrumental from, from years before, helping, helping lead him and help, help move him along, and, share, and uh, Terry sh shared some of those very, some of those private messages between him and Josh, as Josh was, well, Josh was, Josh was getting there, and Terry was, was coaching him, and then his, the, the man that became his pastor, uh, there testified of, of Josh. What a what a difference. I met the, the pastor said, you know, when uh, uh, he said about a year before Josh and Caitlin married, uh, they came to him and uh, wanted to. Uh, I guess this would have been about six years ago. Came to him and wanted to know if he would marry. Him. And uh, he said, he said that Josh had all the right answers. He said, when he left her, he said, Caitlin asked me later, what do you think? I said, that's the lionest boy I ever met in my life, 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 Caitlin. She said, he's smooth, ain't he? She said, yeah, right now he's a little too smooth. He said, they come back about almost a year later. He said, I didn't know it was the same fella. I didn't know it was the same fella. That's what, that, that, that's, that's what, a, that's what a life given over to Jesus. That's, that's what a life that gets serious about living. For the Lord Jesus Christ, that's what it'll do. You'll see that change. Second Corinthians five seventeen says we become a new creation. We're recreated. That's why. That's why Jesus referred to it as having been born again, born again of the Spirit of God from within. Oh my goodness sakes! Mm. After being born again of the Spirit of Almighty God, Almighty God, we have a new appetite that the whole world can't satisfy anymore. Mm. So what's the cause of this hunger? Let's look at the cause of this, this hunger. First of all, we long to be free from sin in every form. And second, we long to be free from these physical bodies and receive a resurrected body. If you don't have that longing, oh, you better talk to the Lord and you better get a spiritual checkup. Oh, Tommy White, if you're list, listening, brother, down there, you've been paralyzed over nine years now, and, and, and hold on, brother. Hold, hold on, brother. God's, God's, got a, God's got a wonderful day coming brother, for you. 1 John 5, 19 states the fact that this whole world lieth in wickedness. The killing and contention and upheaval makes us wish we could just, just, just get away and live in a deserted area and escape from it, don't we? Part of us longs for that great deliverance the song talked about. We will be taken out of this world to dwell in perfect fellowship with others in God. 
You ever thought about most of all our contention and our heartache comes from our relationships? <laughs> that's where most of it. That's where most of it stems from. Most of it stems from. But what the spirit-filled Christian longs for most is to be completely free of sin. I know when I get up there, I know the, the Bible describes it in Revelation, the beauty and the awe of, of, of heaven, those, 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 those huge gates made of pearls, uh, those streets laden with gold. Uh, the foundation under heaven is, <clears throat> is, these, is, these, is these rare gems. But oh my goodness, is the old song, is the old song I love said, I wouldn't care if the streets of gold was a little dirt road and my mansion was made out of knotted pine. Mm, mm, mm. I know when I get there, I'll be sin free. Finally, finally. See, if a person were free from all tendency to sin, temptation would not have any effect on them anymore, then see. It'd have no effect on them. That's why we feel we must avoid temptation because we know, we know we're vulnerable. Jesus said to pray to the Father in heaven, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. We need a lot of help there, don't we? I ain't ashamed to say it. I know I do. <clears throat> when the enemy sows his seeds, the fields of our old natures sometimes still produce a harvest. Some evil remains even in the redeemed. This is what Paul was dealing with and elaborating on when he said, O oh, wretched man am I. I know that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. He talked about, I, I, I do the thing I shouldn't do and then I don't do the thing I should do. Anybody ever felt like that? You better believe that's because you're wrapped in this flesh and blood still. And you're going to have those feelings. Romans 7, 24. That's what Paul said. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Then he answered it. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. He said, my mind and my soul is right, but I just can't get this flesh to always go along with it, Brother Dennis. And it's not going to always go, go along with it. Mm. Y'all gonna have to listen faster. <laughs> we ain't gonna make it. Y'all gotta listen fast now. Would to God we could get rid of the memory of sin. What a torment to remember the dirty words, the jokes, the snatches of obscene songs and experiences. Oh, if we could be free of sin in our thoughts. Mm -mm. I'm gonna ask the question to me and y'all. Do we mourn nearly enough over the sins in our thoughts and imaginations. Mm, I said, brother, brother, you're getting down there deep now. You're getting down there in the quick now. Well, that's where we need to get. That's where we need to get. That's why this is called preaching. <laughs> we need to be challenged. If necessary, convicted. That's when we'll hopefully do something about it, when we get convicted about something, won't we? But are we disgusted over, 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 over some of our thought lines? That's the big battle, if we be honest, you know. That thought life, that's the big battle, especially for the Christian. Especially for the Christian. A person can sin horribly in their thoughts, even though he does it in actions. Fornication, adultery, theft, even murder pervade the mind. You ever felt like just killing somebody for a moment? I don't think there's anybody in here that would pre premeditatedly do it. But, I mean, sometimes people can just make it so mad, boy, if we just, boy, I've said it, man, boy, if I could get my hands around his neck. Yeah. You know, but I, I hope I'd cool off enough time I got my hands around his neck, I'd just talk, I'd talk to him. Look at him right in the eye, good, you know. <laughs> Praise God. Mm. Jealousy, envy, selfishness, pride, don't leave those out. Them get left behind a lot of times. We just won't think about sin as being killing and stealing and adultery. Yeah, don't 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 forget them. Don't forget them others. Mm-hmm. We, we, we can't become satisfied and content and make excuses for some of them thoughts. 
The more we earnestly strive for a clean heart, the more we will mourn over the tiniest spot, the tiniest stain of sin. And you know, you never know what God's going to give you in real life to tie right in with what you're going to preach. That's one of the exciting and beautiful things about it. This time, that case concerns a little vest that a, that a probably, what age child would wear that little black vest in? About a four-year-old? About, about, about Abigail's age. The cutest little Little, little, little black vest. What, 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 what do you call that material it's made out of? Uh, yeah, that pu puffy kind of, you know. Like I had one of them I used to wear coon hunting. And uh, it was warm. I loved it because it was warm. And, but this, this one, Debbie went to a yard sale that Keisha Fuller right down the Elko Road had yesterday. And uh, you talk about making... You talk about making some children and some mamas and some grand and some grandmamas in Georgia and Florida happy. She asked me last night. I said, "Well, well how'd that how that work out? How many of those uh, children's clothes do you think you got?" She said, 400 pieces. Four hundred pieces." She quit counting at four hundred. And read the back seat of the car out there is loaded down for for just your girls that we got to get. And you know. Man alive. But there's this, but back to this little black vest. There's a, you know, you, you, if you're going, if you're going to spill on something, you'd rather it be something black, wouldn't you? Because it ain't going to show up much. Well, if you know Keisha, you know she might be a little OCD. So she, she, she meant she was going to do everything in her power to get that little bit of stain off of that black vest. I would have never noticed it. So you just pointed it out to him, and you about got to hold it in the light just right to tell you. But, but Keisha knew it was there, and it had to go if possible. Well, she just about got it. But I thought about it. Boy, what a tiny little inconspicuous stain on that little vest. And I thought, if, 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 those, if those things that stain my thought life, if, if, if I could be as upset and want to get rid of them as bad, as Keisha Fuller wanted to get rid of that stain on that little vest. Man, I could become a spiritual giant. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. The closer to Jesus we draw, the more we'll deal with our sin. The second big reason we can't be satisfied and feel at home in this world is we have a longing for those resurrected bodies. God gave man a noble body, made in his image, walk around on, on two feet, look upward to heaven, and hopefully praise his maker. I don't know why that's so hard for a lot of people to do that. Good gracious. God gave man a mind to be able to obey his master's commands and hopefully become even the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's what you've become when you become a child of God. But after the body came under the power of death through the fall in the Garden of Eden, all who live on this earth will die sooner or later. Unless the Lord suddenly returns is what we know to be the raptures. So you see, our bodies are not well matched with our newborn souls when we become born again. They're somewhat dull and dreary dwellings for a heaven-born spirit now with their aches and pains and weariness and need of sleep and food and clothing, susceptible to cold, heat, accidents, decay, and oh, now a pandemic that has literally swept the entire earth. These things drag down and hinder spirits that might soar to greater heights. So many times, bad health and pain can almost snuff out once holy desires. We long to be free. Listen to this. Oh God. We long to be free from the chains of this natural body and put on the wedding garments of that spiritual body. We long to be free from the chains of this natural body and put on the wedding garments of that spiritual body. With the bride, the, bride, the saved or the bride of Christ. The bride of that's who he's coming back for. He's the bridegroom. We're his bride. 
And I'll never forget Rasta Salter saying one time, he said, I, he said, I've never seen an ugly bride. But then he just had to add, I've seen a few just barely did make it. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> you know, but he went on to say, you know, he said, you don't see a bride coming down the aisle with old nasty tennis shoes on. That bride, I'm telling you, you know, you know, we, me and David was, that was there, and, you know, Jeff and Melinda called on me to do her. Oh, my Lord, I mean, she's just already naturally pretty, but good Lord have mercy. What, wasn't she something then? And, it, and it's always, it's always that way. That's what Jesus wants to come back for. That's what he wants to come back for. And me and you, me and you, are part of that bride. Think about that. We need to think about that a lot more. Mm. Because, because sin dwells in our hearts and we clothe with this mortal clay, we are glad that our salvation is nearer to us than when we first believed. Amen? You better believe it. It's, we talk about sooner or later. It's going to be a lot sooner now than later. Yeah, it is. Gene Holcomb, about over 30 years ago, me and him, we were building up in the Macon and the Lake Tobasaki area, and we were right there at I-475 getting some gas in the truck, and, and uh, there was a couple uh, right next to us, you know, filling up, and both of them just barely could get in and out of the car, and kind of having a difficult time with the gas pump and everything, you know, and just, I mean, just done got feeble. And, and you know, me and Gene still in the, you know, the, z the zest of, of life, you know, and, you know, and, and um, I said, I felt sorry for him, and I said, you know, I said, I'd, I'd hate to, I'd hate to be, I'd hate to be where they, where they, where they at, they ain't going through what they're going through. And boy, old Gene, there's only Gene Hopeland could do. He said, son, let me tell you what. He said, there's another way to look at that. He said, in a way, I'd rather be where they at because I'd have all that old hard stuff between now and where they at behind me. I said, Lord Gene, man Gene, mm. ain't that the truth? We long to enter into the full enjoyment of our resurrected bodies. And our scripture text encourages us about that. A day will come when we will be delivered from all this present groaning. We will realize the completion of our salvation. It will cover every need and desire. Because when we finally see him, we will be like him. Sinless and ageless. I'm homesick for a country to which I've never been. The Bible refers to it as Beulah Land. Beulah Land. Jesus paid a terrible price for this to be possible. Can I tell you this morning, that's, that's God's last and final and best offer to a human being. It's what he allowed his son to do on Calvary's cross 2,000 years ago. You know, everything seems to always have another addition and a later model that's new and improved. Not going to be any improvement on what Jesus did. And can I tell you, God, God isn't taking any prisoners. There's, no, there's not going to be, and when your life ends here, there's not going to be a holding place where you'll go and have some more time to make up your mind if, if, if that's what, what it really ought to be. You've got to have that made up like Josh Lucas did before. God sends that death angel for you. And unless you happen to be of that generation that's alive when the rapture takes place, He's going to rapture every one of us individually. We're going to all be raptured. We're going to all be raptured. I pray above everything, above everything, that you've made it right with Jesus. I'm going to do it a little different on the inv invitation this morning. I'm going to tell you how to be saved, and then we're going to close the service with, 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 with the song, Beauty Land. Joyce, come on, come on up. And Gene, if you want to sing along on it, that's... That's, that's, that's up to you. Brother Jeff, you come on up. We're going we're gonna to play it in the key of D. And, but I want to talk to you a little bit more about where you're at with Jesus. There must have been a time that you've agreed with God 
that you're a sinner. And then you acted on that by welcoming him into your life, asking his forgiveness for those sins, and making an honest attempt to repent. That word, word repent means to turn away from. That you want to do better, that you want to get better. And you need to do that. And if you hadn't done, done that until now, I want you to do that as we, as we sing this song. Beautiful. You got one you want to do? Let the spirit lead, brother. <laughs> Cause you play it, be playing a simple man's guitar. That'll work. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll bring it over here. Yeah, you just get strapped up. Yeah, I'll bring you the stuff. And that's the case, folks. You need it. 
go back and actually move your momentum. It is. The way they can pick. can tell no pain can rise whisper Jesus I love you Jesus to sing near the cross. Do y'all remember near the cross? Jesus
Thank you, Mr. Old Mayor.